Okay, so um, this is a response video to a subscriber that asked a question about timing. Um, he said that he's uh, having a hard time with timing snap um, because he's able to get pretty much the same amount of snap on his longer shots as he is on his distance shots. So, you know, he said that the amount of effort he puts in on his short shots, he's pretty much able to get the same amount of snap as his distance shots. Um, and I may be misquoting him, but that's essentially the, the meat and potatoes of the question that he asked. Um, in regards to timing. Um, so how I will get into timing without making this an incredibly long video. And again, this is an important time for me because this is my off season, but it's also uh, still the holidays, so I'm seeing my family. So um, I'm releasing a number of short videos. Uh, it takes me a very long time to edit. I love filming them. Um, and I also want to say thank you. Um, there has been an overwhelmingly positive response from the disc golf community that I know, um, but also from people that I don't know. Um, and the, the kind comments, uh, they're, they're very, they're very well received and thank you. Uh, the whole point of this channel is to change the culture of information of coaching that's out there. Um, anyhow, so uh, his handle, his username, Oki Trades. This is for Oki Trades, who commented on a video I put out on Snap. So if you, the, the subscriber that commented, or anyone, um, and this video pertains to anybody struggling with their timing. Um, how I'm going to relate this today is rhythm. Um, because I think that the two pretty much go hand in hand, although they may have a little bit of a different definition. So generally speaking, um, and this is something that I've heard Nico say, I've traveled with Nico in 2006 or 2007, something like that. It was the first sponsor I ever had. Uh, Gateway uh, approached me at Bowling Green one year. Um, played with David Wiggins when he was like 11 or something. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, anyway. I signed with Gateway. Uh, handshake deal. Innova talked to me after I shook hands with the owner of Gateway, but you know, I, I honored my word, went and through for Gateway, got to meet Nico, got to travel with Nico, phenomenal. Um, but he has a lot of very solid technical advice to give, and I also think he's great for the game of disc golf. He's, a, he's an awesome person. Um, if you get to know Nico LaCastro, um, regardless of him being vilified, uh, Nico's a great person. He's also a great athlete. And I think that the game of disc golf as a professional sport needs to understand that if you're a professional athlete, um, that's your focus. Uh, doesn't necessarily need to be your PR campaign. I think Nico's great for the game. Um, anyhow, so what I've heard Nico say, and this rings true, is... You do not want to accelerate until the point of maximum accelerate, until the point of release. Um, how I relate this to my personal game is, is through tennis and then through my coaching journey for the most part I've coached as a tennis coach. Um, but the greatest players of all time in terms of tennis live off of three to four inches before contact, and then three to four inches after contact. What that means is as you're coming up to a tennis ball, 
and this does relate to disc golf, so sorry if I get a little bit wordy, but this does relate to disc golf as it is about building up momentum and releasing it, but how this relates to disc golf and tennis is the greatest players of all time with tennis, they build up momentum and then they translate that momentum into the ball as the strings are contacting the ball. You build up momentum in disc golf with your hand, and as the disc is coming out of your hand, that's when you translate the most speed into the disc. However, you must, there must be a series of accelerations and decelerations. Um, just like when you snap a towel. So let's say, for instance, when you snap a towel, you build up momentum and then you decelerate momentum so that the towel will snap past your hand. Following through with the disc. So let's say, for instance, that I continue following through with the disc. The disc never accelerates past my hand. This may seem counterintuitive, but... As the disc is coming out, just before the disc comes out, you need to accelerate the most. And then as the disc is coming out, rather than continuing with it, you actually decelerate your hand so that the disc can accelerate past your hand. Just like when you snap a towel, just like when you crack a whip, um, the handle of the whip stops or decelerates so that the whip itself can crack past the handle. This is the same exact thing with timing or rhythm in disc golf. You go from slow, 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 faster, faster, fastest as the disc is coming out, and then you actually decelerate in order to create snap. Um, I want to thank Kevin Jones for sending some music uh, Luke, um, as well. Uh, if you like Luke Humphreys as a presenter, um, the dude's a wonderful human being. Um, he's also got a great channel. Um, your boy Luke is ice cold, man. He's a super cool guy, as is Kevin. Um, got to catch up with him a bit, uh, Last year, year before last in Portland, stayed with the Russell family. Uh, you know, A. Russ's brother commented in the comments a number of weeks ago. What's up, Russell fam? Um, everybody in Houston, all the mats, Matt Hall, um, all the mats in Houston. I've heard from you guys and seen you guys. Anyway, uh, Egret, the man, Edward Gardier. Recent subscriber. Too cool to see that. Uh, he's a mainstay in the Houston area. Yeah. All the love, guys. Hope it helps. Thank you so much for the support. Um, I will start releasing long-form videos again. I'm practicing a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, enjoying the journey. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, get out there. Get practicing. Go disc golf.